What is going on everybody? I'm BJ. Welcome back to the shop. So with the popularity of the bullet skulls, as you can see here, and just the skulls in general that I've been making, I figured a lot of people are asking, how do I make them? What's my process? I did a quick little thing on Instagram and TikTok just to kind of walk through just a, a Cliff Notes version of my process. So I figured why not make a full film just showing you my step-by-step -step process. As you can see behind me, I have several molds. This is my general production. When I'm running, I mean, I'm running, what, 24 in some cases, 18 average. Um, I've actually got 10 more molds coming. Um, these are all from Let's Resin. I'll have them linked um, in the description below. I'll actually have everything linked that I use um, from the molds to the epoxy that I use to the pressure pots and even the um, mold release that I use. Um, if you're depending on what you're wanting to put in the molds, that's totally up to you. I've done, I've got different ones that are, um, like I said, the, the bullet brass. We've done golf balls, we've done coffee. I've got them all, they're all going to be, once they're all in production, they're all gonna be listed um, on my store. So if you wanna purchase one, you can right now. The only things that are for sale are the bullet brass skulls, but we're eventually going to have, like I said, a coffee one for sale, a golf ball one for sale, and then a couple others. Um, I'm actually, I think we're gonna do a barbershop version that's gonna have um, some razors in it. Um, we're doing one for a local a local barbershop, and I figured why not? Like if they turn out cool, we'll we'll throw them on the store and sell them too. Um, if you have any questions, leave it down below. But I'm gonna walk you through the process on on just the general process. It's really simple, but there's a few tips and tricks that I've found just from doing close to a hundred of these so far, just in a month. I I produced and sold close to a hundred of these in one month which was absolutely crazy. It's caused me to go from one pressure pot to now you see the two behind me. There's another one over here um, that's just off camera right now. Um, it's, it's a hacked together pressure pot, but yeah, I'm running three pressure pots at a time just to keep up with these orders um, going through the molds. And I'll show you some things that I've learned about the molds because they don't last forever, especially when you're running through them as fast as I am. I mean, I've got some of these molds that have had, you know, 10 pours in them already, and they start to lose their integrity, which is fine. And the, the cool thing is, is with Let's Resin is I've worked out a deal with them. Um, they have replaced a few, but I understand in this production, these are roughly $8 a piece. If I've got to burn through, you know, I think so far I've, I've had six go bad out of you know the almost 30 that i have so that's not bad for a hundred skulls getting produced you know that that's quite a bit and and i've added more molds as i've went along so i started with with one originally um once sales took off then we added um but my original six they're they're doa or not doa they're they're dead um and what they've done is they've lost their luster on the inside, so they're not producing a clean, glossy finish. They're producing a matte finish. And then the rims, so you can see, I'll get in here close, you can see this. So the rims on these, focus, they're really nice and crisp. And then what'll happen, and this is not one of the worst ones, but you can see, we'll compare them here. Come on, focus. See how the rim on that one has started to roll down. Now, from my research and what I've determined by talking to Let's Resin and a couple other people, this was my fault. And I'll go over what I did wrong and what you need to do if you're going to do this to make these things last. One, you're always going to use a mold release. Um, don't use heat on these. I was using a blowtorch originally. That's how I burn, how I ruined my first one. Again, totally on me, my bad. Um, then I started using a heat gun and it helped a little bit. They last a little bit longer, but the heat is causing these edges to, to roll. Um, it's really thin silicone, so it's gonna eventually fail. Um, the recommendation that I've been given and what I've started doing is rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Just a quick spray, spritz with rubbing alcohol. It's going to pop all the surface bubbles. 
And so when you're going into your pressure pot, you're getting a cleaner um, pour. Um, the pressure pot is, that's going to help prevent the bubbles around inside the casings because you'll get some bubbles in here and then you'll get bubbles around the eyes and the nose. I've yet to find a way to prevent that. There's probably somebody out there that knows how to do it without using a pressure pot. And I've seen a lot of people tell me that, oh, I don't use a pressure pot. It's no big deal. And everyone that they show me a picture of, like I said, it's got those bubbles around the nose and the eyes. Um, and I'll, let me, give me one second. I'm going to go grab one that is actually my original and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so we're talking about the bubbles. So as you can see in this one, get in there once it focus. That's absolutely crystal clear. There's no bubbles in there, no nothing. I mean, it is like glass. This is the original one I poured, and you can see, look at all those bubbles up in here. Around the nose, there's one right there. You can see the micro bubbles down there. And it's not as clear. I didn't use as clear of a resin and the brass wasn't polished. This was just my initial experiment. But by using the pressure pot, in, in my personal opinion, it's easier than using a vacuum pot. Um, and for that, one, when you're, using, when you're using the vacuum pot, you can't fill the molds up all the way because when you pull the vacuum, it's going to cause everything to spill over. With these, with the pressure pot, I can fill it up right to the brim set it in there and on the, the stand I've got, set all of them in there, crank the pressure up. I run them about 50 PSI, no issues whatsoever. Like I said, it sits in there. It's about two to three days to cure. It's what I usually leave them in there for. And then we'll go through that. So we're going to start off mixing the epoxy. We'll add a little bit of color. We're actually going to do a custom one in this one. I actually got a custom order for a hot pink and it's actually um, bashful bubble gum and I use primarily Black Diamond. This is my the main brand I use. So this is Bashful Bubblegum from Black Diamond. It's actually a really cool color. I did a full board in this, and it's it's a really cool color. I love it. And I was so glad that, that they requested this color. So we're going to do this, and we'll just kind of go through the process on how, you know, I start the pours, get, all, get everything mixed, and we'll go from there. So follow along. All right, so when we're mixing these, I love, because the, the epoxy that I use is a two to one. So I use the liquid glass, thick pour, two to four inch. It's a two to one resin. And I love these, these buckets from TCP Global. The cool thing is that they are reusable. So you can see TCP Global, I'll have them linked in my bio. Um, I buy them by like the 50, but they're reusable. I can usually get three or four pours out of one of these. This one's kind of running towards the end of its life. Um, there's a little bit of epoxy on the side, but it really doesn't affect anything. Um, so what we're going to do, we're going to do the two to one. And I found with, for every four molds, if I go to the five right here, so five and five, that gives me enough epoxy to do four. So, and what we're going to do first is we're going to get some casings here that out of the way and I usually fill these up I'll show you here so I fill them up I get a handful or two fill them up to about right there so about halfway if you can see that about halfway up is how high I fill them to start out so we're gonna do this to each one of them and those that are wondering at home for nine mil shells or casings or whatever you want to call them, these skulls hold roughly 100, to the brim, roughly 100 casings. Now, I don't fill them all the way up because one, you have shrinkage with the epoxy and that would be expensive. So I usually run about 80 per skull. And as you can see over here, I've got two. So this is actually a tiered stack. So when they sit in the mold, in the pressure pot, they sit just like that. I'll raise y'all up so you can actually see what's going on here. Scoot it back a little bit. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the best cameraman, but hey, y'all don't watch me for my camera content. Um, so yeah, it's cool. So you can actually stack them in there 
inside the pressure pot. And if I didn't mention, the pots are from California Air Tools. It is the C, the C, or 225C. So it's a two and a half gallon pot. They're rated for 60 PSI on their working pressure. I like said I run them at about 50. It's awesome because they've got a regulator so I can just plug my hose into it and then you're golden. You just plug it in, it regulates it up to the, the PSI that you want and then you're good to go. So we're gonna do two different pours. Uh, since we're just doing one, each one of these molds roughly takes 11 ounces of resin. Now you're going to take up some space with the casings. So I see anywhere between nine to 10 ounces when we're pouring these. So you do get a little left over. That's why I always keep an extra mold. And this is my overflow mold. And I just pour what's left over in that. So we're gonna mix it all once. Then I'll pour off 10 ounces into that one. All right, so made it to the five with that. Now I buy this stuff in the three gallon kits because I just, I run through so much of it. And then we'll do part B to the second five. And then we've got our, our little drill with our mixer on it. Now this is gonna introduce a lot of bubbles, but you're fine. Don't, don't listen to what anybody says, you're fine. We're gonna let it set for about 10 minutes degas a lot of it before we pour, but we're going to introduce bubbles when we do it. That is why we use the pressure pot. You're going to mix this, and I'll stop it. You're going to mix this until it turns clear. Because it's going to be kind of cloudy. Once it's fully mixed, it's going to be clear. If you're mixing it by hand, good rule of thumb, three to four minutes, and you're good, scrape the sides. I prefer the mixing attachment just because it goes a lot faster. And I will stop it and kind of scrape the sides a little bit. Do that to get the excess off. All right, so we're gonna come over here and we're gonna pour off 10 ounces. Roughly. We might have a little left over. 10 ounces right there. Oh, see, we got a little, little Chert epoxy on there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix this one first with my pigment. And we're using Battleship Gray from Black Diamond. I love this color. And you're only going to use a little bit. So what I do is I use this little bitty tiny screwdriver. Focus. From my friends over at Ahanui Artisans. And then what I do is, see here, I just get... Just a dab, just a little bit. That is enough. All we're doing is just slightly tinting the epoxy. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna help prevent our yellowing and discoloring over time. So again, like I said, that's that bashful bubble gum. Super cool color. Not much of a pink guy, but I really like it. When you pour it solid, it's got some really good coloring to it. Some good swirls. So we're not going to use near as much. So go right there. And then what we're going to do is we're actually going to take regular stir stick. Should probably clean my stuff off before I do this. And then we'll just mix it all together. And you might see this one doesn't, it's not as bright, so we might add a little bit more. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're going to add another little drop of this one because I want this one to be a little bit brighter. Just because of you know, the request from the customer. You can see, you can kind of see it there. All right, and so what we're going to do, so we're going to start with the bashful bubble gum one. So we're going to pour 
straight down, just filling up over the top of the casing. So right there, we'll stop. And yeah, we're gonna use way more, we're gonna use way less than what I thought. So mix this all together. This is just releasing the bubbles that are in there and a little bit more. You can see it really, the level drops once we fill up all those cases with the epoxy. Now, if you're just pouring solid colors, you don't have to worry about this. If you're not filling the molds with anything, you don't have to worry about doing any of this. So now that that's there, I'll grab another handful. And just kind of lightly drop it all in. Just kind of filling it all up right there. And I try to get them oriented where the, the open ends are facing up. So it's easier to fill on the second pour. And my rule of thumb on this, so you can see I got a little bit left. I got a, about an ounce left. Uh, so I poured 10 ounces, ended up using about nine. Let it sit for, I let them sit about 20 minutes before I put them in the pressure pot. That's the beauty of the slow curing um, epoxy is it's gonna sit, let all the bubbles it can come out and then top it off. I top them off once I get them in the mold. So I'm gonna go and do the other three real quick and then we'll go over getting them in the, mold, in the pressure pot. So while we're at it, these are some of the other ones I do. Let me show you what these look like. These are mini skulls. And I usually throw these in with the larger ones if someone wants them. And I fill them with little 22 shells. So these are super simple. Now what you're gonna want makes it easier is I use these little dental syringes and I clip off the ends a little. And we're gonna do them since we got all this pink left over. We're gonna do them with the pink. And then just slowly drizzle that in. And these go into the pressure pots with everything else. That's that. We'll let that sit. So as far as putting them in here, as you can see, I've already got a set in there. That's why I love these trays I made. But literally, you know, we got a little bit of spillage, but no big deal. All these trays are wrapped in Bidwell and iron tape, so they're not going to, nothing's going to stick. So we take our lid. Set it on here, and I love these because the bolts that hold everything down are far superior from the Harbor Freight models. So we just tighten it all down. And they don't have to be super tight. About as tight as you can get them by hand. You don't need to hulk out on it or anything. And I'm going to close that, and then we just fill it up to about 50 PSI. And it sets for three days. So we'll come back in about three days, and we'll go through the demolding process. All right, so these have been in here for two days now, somewhere like that. So Again, the beauty of these stands, everything comes out nice and easy. So let's get the pink one out. That was our our main one. And then with the molds, with the mold release, you see this stuff just comes off super easy. Roll it out. And there you go, focus. Absolutely. Beautiful. So, and we'll do a mini one real quick. We've got some of the minis right here. It's a little harder to get out just because they're so tiny. Let's see. Just 
fold it out. And there you go. Focus. Little mini skull and just a size comparison. Ta da! That's it. There's your skulls. And as you can see, crystal clear inside the eyes and everywhere. Few little bubbles here at the top, but that's a problem, or at the bottom, but it's not a problem because it's going to sit like that. And then you can see on the minis, same thing. Super clear. You can see all the casings in there. They're super cool. All right, so it's been three days, and you see wardrobe change. Um, everything's out of the molds. Everything came out great. And I actually show a different one. So this is one of the newer models that we're working on. So the polyhedral die skull. Kind of cool. We got that one. And then we did a golf ball one too. You can see how clear that came out. I just put a little bit of blue pigment. It's actually, I'll show you here. It's Bora Bora Blue. It'll focus from Black Diamond. It's one of my favorite colors. I use this one all the time on some of the bigger tables. And we went over the process. So we're going to just kind of recap some of the materials that we use. So like I said, we use the super clear resin, um, the mold release. So what I use is this seal fix. It is a silicone free mold release. Um, I'll have it linked down below. It's actually one of the cheaper ones I've found and works really well, whether you're using HDPE molds, um, the silicone molds, even um, your, the MD, or not MDF, the melamine with um, tuck tape or um, the, any of your, the plastic tapes. We've got your, in this case, we use the silicone molds, the skull molds from Let's Resin. You can get these on Amazon for 10 bucks, I think, eight, 10 bucks. The other little thing I didn't mention earlier on is get you a little squirt bottle. These are little 30 mil bottles. Fill them with rubbing alcohol. This is going to help pop a lot of the bubbles because you don't want to use heat on these molds. It like I'm going to show you, it will distort them, discolor them. It'll cause them to have problems later on. And it's just a pain to deal with down the road. But that's the step. It's pretty simple. Um, if you're using, like I said, the deep pour, in my shop, it's I think it's been sitting at about 70 degrees for the last couple days. So realistically, it was two days in the molds before I was able to demold them. Um, and what I normally do is I will pour off all in to however many molds I'm doing, whether it's four, eight, you know, 24 usually at a time. And then I'll leave a little bit left over and I usually keep a separate mold that I just kind of fill up every time. That is what I use to judge when I can demold. Because if it's still a little sticky and a little runny, it's not ready to come out of the, the pressure pots yet. But what I've realized, what I've noticed is two to three days, 48 hours plus, and you're usually good to go. After that, I mean, it's just, you're, you know, the, 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 the epoxy has cured and you're good. Anything less than that, you run the risk of when you depressurize, your bubbles coming back and causing a problem. So you always want to, like I said, you know, lean on the safe side and, you know, 48 to 36 hours, you know, whatever you want to do, 72. I mean, four days is going to be a little too long, but, um, Two to three days, good rule of thumb on the deep pour epoxy. Now, when you're doing the smaller, the little skulls, which I just put a batch of 13 in just to catch up with some of my orders, you can use, I'll show you here. So this is from, it's a little nasty, but this is from UC Woods. This is their thin pour fast. This is actually cured and ready. So if you're doing tabletops and stuff like that, that is ready to work. So sand within three hours. So I put them in right now, it's six o'clock. I'm here and by nine o'clock tonight, I'm ready to pull those out and tomorrow morning they can go in a box. I'll demold them in the morning, throw them in the, in the ship boxes to ship out. So if you have any questions, 
about my process, anything, leave a comment down below. Um, give me a like and a follow if you feel I deserve it. And um, we're gonna be doing a lot more of the epoxy stuff. We're actually, I'm gonna start working with Let's, Let's Resin. I've got a project coming up with them. And there's something else. That's really, well, I guess that's really about it. You'll just see, just give me a follow. And then you'll see what we're doing later on. A lot more epoxy stuff coming down the road. That's a, getting away from the epoxy boards and tables. We're going to do some pretty cool casting stuff and different colors, different molds. I've got a couple new style molds coming that we're going to test out and go from there. But I appreciate y'all watching this. Appreciate you hanging out with me today. Um, and like I said, if you have any questions, anything, feel free to leave me a comment down below. Love y'all. We'll see you next time.